ever since Nintendo went and dropped that mighty big fucking blanketing bombshell that they were in fact working on their next generation system, the Nintendo NX. Speculation has been running wild. This was the video game equivalent of a cock tease though for any Nintendo purist out there who was foaming at the mouth at the idea that Nintendo was going to have new hardware out there, new franchises, new iterations of all their pre-existing games that they love to death so that they could see their characters on yet again another platform. But all video game blue balls aside, speculation has been running rampant about, you know, the specs, the release date, what kind of franchises we'd see on there, what the system's going to look like, what the controller's going to look like. You name it, it's been said and it's been asked, and I decided that I'd make a video talking about all the things that I would like to see from the Nintendo NX, and I thought it would be a good discussion piece for everybody else out there just because this is all something that we want to go and see, so why not make a little wish list for what we want to see with the Nintendo NX. One of the first things Nintendo needs to do is have hardware that's on par with the competition. That's fucking Sony and Microsoft. Anytime that a third party developer out there is saying, we want to go and make some games and the publisher's like, okie dokie, let's go and look at our options. The available options are two thirds of the market to have specs that are right here. All right, and now the PC platform, which is about the same thing and or greater because it's an ever evolving platform. So that's what the fuck they're gonna aim for. Now, whenever the NX gets announced, if Nintendo opts to go and have weaker hardware than the competition, that means that third party company has to look at a watered down port comparably. That is not the best way to go and do business whenever you're trying to go and instill some kind of confidence in those companies and establish a bond that, yes, you want to make your games for our system. It'll be great. Well, if it's easy to manufacture games for and code for, that's fucking fantastic. Something else that's very important whenever doing stuff like this, but if it's weaker, that doesn't actually help them at all. And this is a track record that they've had going for a long time. The past two generations for Nintendo, we have seen the Wii and the Wii U, both of which have had specs that were much weaker than their competition. As a matter of fact, they were always just stat-wise, a generation behind compared to what Sony and Microsoft were offering. And most people say, oh, that's just about graphics and graphics and graphics. No, it's not. It's a whole lot more to do that. If you sit down and you begin developing, there's a shit ton more to this than just graphics. And again, this is about trying to get games onto your platform. And if your hardware is not up to snuff, that's not a good thing. That means that you're going to be lacking in content that everybody else is getting. That means that everybody else is going to look at that competition. When they're sitting there thinking about it, when a consumer, it's like, you know, I want to go and get a system. I like Nintendo, but all the games I want are over there. Oh well. And they go elsewhere for their, their decision. Gets worse because Nintendo's coming in late. So to me, they shouldn't even be on par. They should be greater than the competition. So that they could potentially even get exclusives on there that even Sony and Microsoft aren't getting. They could begin getting these hardcore titles that they can't get because, well, they were late to the party, but they have hardware that they don't. That would be amazing. That would be a first for Nintendo to go and get the hardcore titles that they cannot pick up. And I would love to see something like that if I was Nintendo. And they should want to go and do stuff like this. You know, Nintendo, and I understand their whole business logic behind us. Take hardware that you can go and make money off of day one. It's a known fact that 99% of the time when a console manufacturer puts their system out there, they are not making money off of that hardware until at least, bare minimum, at least, later in the second year of that cycle. That entire generation, you're just forking out cash every time somebody buys one, but you're making up for it in volume due to software. Because of that, they do just fine for themselves. Nintendo is kind of backwards. While they don't make up for it in volume because they don't have all the third-party support, they have hardware that they're making money off of, and the thing is Nintendo first party is the main reason why you're going there, and that's not helpful. They also need to make sure that they help third party understand their hardware. That's something that manufacturers of these consoles try their damnness and their best to do. There's a reason why typically first party games are some of the best out there. Because they understand everything about the machine. But if they have people go and help 
all these AAA developers understand the architecture of the machine and how it works, the ins and outs of it, then they can perform all these amazing fucking technological feats that are just amazing. They're like fucking tech wizards and shit, just typing away, making some of the most fantastic games and experiences that you are ever going to enjoy in your entire life, especially for that generation. But Nintendo needs to make sure that they go and do that. They have to reach out. And that's gonna allow me to segue into them re-establishing third party. That's one of the things they've been lacking severely in this generation. It's the worst it's ever been in Nintendo's history. And anybody can sit there and fucking defend it. You are lying to yourself if you think Nintendo has great third party support. Look at their release schedule right now. Especially look at it compared to year one whenever the Wii U first was released. There are so many publishers out there that are non-existent at all. They don't even show up whatsoever on their release schedule and they never will. Many of those titles that they're making are never going to show up on the Wii U platform because they don't got the hardware to be able to push it. So that doesn't help them. They are an entire generation behind in terms of specs. That's not allowing them to get any fucking favors. So they need that third party support. Nintendo had tons back in the 16-bit era, in 8-bit era especially, but they actually had a monopoly in the 8-bit era, which most people kind of overlooked. The fact that they were kind of grimy about their business tactics back then, and one of the reasons why things such as the TurboGrafx-16, the Sega Master System, had trouble getting proper footing outside of Japan in certain different markets that they were actually thriving in. So, moving on from all that, right now, they don't have the third-party support, so how can they go about it? They need to go and hit up all the companies that they've worked hand in hand with. Take your Square Enixes, take your Segas, take your Capcoms, take your Namco Bandai's, take your Konami's. All of those companies have one thing in common. They've worked hand in hand with Nintendo. Nintendo has actually offered them up their own franchises for them to develop on. And there you go. That means a whole hell of a lot. So go back to them and say, hey, we want an exclusive game from each one of you within the first couple months of launch or at launch and make that shit explode. Think about it, Square Enix, we want Super Mario RPG 2. Boom, that's a big ass announcement. Capcom, Mega Man Legends 3, we saw tons of fans really want that. What if you decide to go and take that from a 3DS game to a Nintendo NX game? Now, all of a sudden, boom, and tons of people are excited about that. Get Inafune back there, because he's already said that he wants to finish up that game. So it's kind of just asking to be made in itself. So there's another thing right there, and that's just one of many, keep in mind, of games that you can go to. Uh, they, they could go to Namco Bandai and be like, hey, we would really like, I don't know, an exclusive Soul Calibur game. How about that? They've already done exclusive Soul Calibur games for Sony, so why not for Nintendo? Soul Calibur 3 was exclusive to PlayStation 2. They could go and do something similar for Nintendo. And again, most people would like to see Link as an unlockable character in that. And that's not including all the shit ton of other characters that they could have in something like that, which would be fucking amazing. They've been working with Tecmo a whole shit ton. Look at things like Hyrule Warriors, for example, is one of the best fucking games that they've Tecmo has produced in ages. And that was because Nintendo oversaw most of the project and made sure that the quality was insanely high. I loved the hell out of that game. So why not go and do the same thing yet again with more franchises? It makes tons of sense. I would love to see them do something like that, so fucking do it. So then, Playtonic Studios. Used to be Rare, right? Oh man, and Rare was the shit. They had such a close working relationship that is still on very good terms. Why not scoop them up as an exclusive developer for your system? I always wonder why Nintendo did not buy Rare. It made no fucking sense. It was one of the dumbest fucking moves in that company's history. They gave it up to Microsoft without even fucking thinking twice because they are piss poor at making certain decisions and pulling the trigger. There. Pick them up and run with it. I mean, they're working on ukulele right now, but think about all the things that they had done that was just flat out amazing. You already know that they're seasoned and they know what the fuck they're doing, so you can trust them even with some of your own IPs. They can make exclusives, brand new IPs, and work on pre-existing ones. Run with it. So you've got even more talented people underneath you, more third-party games coming out, more exclusives, and that's the thing. Whenever you're looking at a system, you're judging it based off of the games that are out there. What? 
you know, I really want to play this game. It's not on that system. Not going to get that system, I guess. I'm going to get on this platform where I can play it. Nintendo needs to make, and I'm talking like the biggest companies too, Ubisoft and Activision, Electronic Arts. Say what you will about the companies, but each one actually is a franchise that is, is big amongst the masses, amongst the most common of gamers and uncommon of gamers. Those companies produce games that have worldwide appeal, and Nintendo needs to make sure that they have them, because if they're losing out on titles such as that, that's not going to help them long term. Hell, even short term, it's just not going to help them at all. You want to make sure that you are constantly representing everything that's out there and then some. You need to make sure that you always have all of these games here that are exclusive and you have everything else that everybody else has. If you're left on anything, that means that you are fucking losing out. So Nintendo, be smart, re-establish, third party. As much as everybody may say, I really like the Nintendo Wii Remote, I really enjoy the Nintendo Wii U tablet controller, how about just a regular fucking controller packed in for the NX? No gimmicks, just a regular fucking controller. I know, kind of crazy, right? That I don't want gimmicks in my controller because I just want to play a fucking game. I don't understand their fascination with this shit because it doesn't really set them apart it just presents more problems the wii u tablet controller is expensive as shit for them to manufacture and you can't even go out to the stores and buy an extra one you just got the one then with the wii remotes you need to attach a fucking separate accessory for this shit to even be somewhat useful in regular games so extra money to make this shit work somewhat how it should nightmarish just give us a regular controller. Nintendo set the fucking standard whenever it came to controllers. And most people forget that. Who created the fucking D-pad? Nintendo did. The little diamond shape for the face buttons? That's Nintendo. Shoulder buttons? That's Nintendo. They set the standard. Strap on two analog sticks? What do you got? The fucking Wii U Pro controller, basically. But pack in something that's just a normal controller. The last time that you even attempted something like that was with the GameCube controller, which, well, it's a good controller. There are still things about it that I would have fixed, like an extra shoulder button up top where the Z button is, a select button, maybe in a, a bigger d pack That thing was so fucking microscopic and sad looking. It was just like, what, what the fuck is this? So take your micro dick D-pad, get rid of that, put a regular D-pad on there for thumbs that aren't the fucking size of thimbles and you're golden and good to go so a regular controller packed in with the nx that'd be swell can we fucking get rid of region lock why is your system region locked there is no fucking reason that your system has region lock in this day and age all it does is push potential sales away it's never been something like you know if we go and establish region lock on our system i'm sure tons of people are gonna be happy and rushing out the stores to pick it up that's not a way to sell anybody on anything i actually import games i have a lot of import games i have them for playstation 1 playstation 2 playstation 3 playstation 4 sega saturn sega genesis i mean Fucking hell. Oh, Dreamcast? I've got all of these different things. Hell, I've got import Famicom and Super Famicom games, and there's a reason, because there's tons of things that don't leave Japan that I want to go and pick up, and there's been a lot of things that haven't even left the PAL regions from Europe and Australia, like, that I want to go and pick up because, well, I want to go and play them. So, region lock doesn't help at all. Get rid of it. Abolish it. It is an outdated mechanism that pisses people off. Anytime that I think, oh man, I can't actually go and play something, I feel like I'm being held back from an experience and enjoying things. And that just irks the fuck out of me. And again, I don't know anybody that has ever been like, yeah, region lock, I can play less games now. That's great. No one fucking says that, except for the insane. So region lock can suck a fat fucking Donkey Kong dick. Expand dong? No, it's fucking flaccid and sad. Shit looks like a goddamn banana peel that you left on a Mario Kart track. So don't do it. Region lock can go fuck itself. Backwards compatibility is one of the main things that makes me look at a system and say, wow, that's fucking awesome. I can play all the games that I already built up in this library on over there without having to have multiple systems hooked up. That's great. I've always loved that. The very first system that I ever got that had backwards compatibility was the PlayStation 2. 
and it blew my mind. It made it so much easier for people to transition from that generation on into this one because they weren't really losing out on anything because they could still play their games on there. And the, pa the fact is, past console life cycles still continue on for a little bit during the current gen, like right now. Last generation, we're still seeing games released monthly, multiple games, tons of exclusives too, which I'm still picking up and playing. But if you said, hey, all the Wii U games will be compatible on there, that's great. The Wii U tablet controller, compatible. Great. The Wii, co the actual Wii remote, compatible. Great. The Wii games, compatible. That's fucking mind blowing. Let's keep this shit going. If you could somehow manage and I know that this is just really stretching, but if you could manage it to somehow get the people who were behind the Dolphin emulator and make it so that you could increase the visuals on pre-existing games and put that shit out there, people would just it blow their fucking minds. You know, I had seen like the PlayStation 2 smoothing and the PS1 smoothing that you can do on PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 respectively, and I always thought that shit was really cool, but I was like, what if they could go and do that on a modern console? That'd make backwards compatibility even better. You know, if you want to go and really sell people on some shit, that is the way to do it. These are small, minor little details that make a large difference. There's lots of people out there that still have all these games. They're still going out there and buying these games. There's people that still have that hardware, but they would love if the current gen of hardware would go and do some shit like that. So allow people's entire libraries to continue on on that system, and sure enough, you're gonna make all your fans happy. I love the Virtual Console, and the Virtual Console is one of the best fucking things about the Nintendo platform in terms of digital offerings. That shit needs to be cheaper. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Considering that you're essentially just selling us ROMs that I can go and get for free, why the fuck do they cost as much as they do? There's no reason behind it, and why the fuck is it that from the Nintendo Wii to the Nintendo Wii U, you had to go and start the catalog completely from scratch? Do you realize how fucking ass nine that is? And then you're still releasing things separately on each platform, and that makes even fucking less sense. This needs to be all under one umbrella, one much cheaper umbrella. Nobody wants to pay you a lot of money. Nobody wants to pay you fucking eight dollars for like a Super Nintendo game that's digital. And I don't give a shit what any fucking ass clown out there is gonna say. Yeah, well, if you try to buy the cartridge, it costs a lot more. And they're not making money off of that cartridge, you fucking dipshit. That's an actual physical cartridge. That is something that you can hold in your hand. It's fucking tangible. This is a digital ROM, nothing else, nothing more. There is no fucking reason to cost that. Make the shit a dollar. You'll see sales go through the fucking roof because what are you paying for with it? The game's already developed, it's done. You already paid for the license, it's done. You're paying for the fucking server space. That's it. Make the shit cheap and watch them all fly. You're not gonna run out of copies suddenly. And there's no cost to manufacture this. There's nothing else to do with it. You are fucking done. So it makes no sense for it to cost as much as it does. Think about it. If a title is $8, you are less likely to get lots of people jumping on it. But if it's a dollar, you have everybody buying it. You think that one person buying it for $8 versus fucking like 50 people buying it for a dollar is going to end up making any sense whenever you look at the two figures? Anybody out there, it doesn't take a fucking mathematician to figure out that this shit is the right way to do it. Make it dirt cheap because it's the right thing to do and put all the games back on there. Why the fuck does it take this like from system to system? I don't give a shit the excuse. I don't give a shit the reason. It just is backwards, it makes no sense. And the amount of time that you have to wait between them releasing this stuff is wretched. It's horrible. I mean, and especially when the Wii already had it. I'm just like, why? Why? You know, do that, just be smart about it, make the shit cheap, and make a fuck ton of them. I'm talking, I'm talking like, drop, like, 30 titles in a single day. Who the fuck cares if it's a ton of them and like, oh, that's too many doesn't matter because that is variety that everybody needs and guess what that shits on like emu paradise and every other fucking rom site out there available for download 24 hours a day seven days a week and has been for fucking over a decade now so just make it happen do the right thing make the virtual console a shit ton better because it's one of the best things that you have going for you digitally 
Nintendo's launch lineup for the Nintendo NX needs to blow people's fucking minds. They need to come in swinging like Little Mac, knocking shit out of the park. I'm talking blow your fucking balls off, no warning label, people being rushed off to the emergency room with big shit-eating grins despite the fact that they have no fucking testicles anymore because Nintendo's launch lineup was that fucking badass. I'm talking Mario, I'm talking Zelda, I'm talking Metroid. Day fucking one, if you went and said that you had those as your exclusives, People will lose their fucking minds. Bring back tons of other heavy hitters. Reestablish all of your other franchises that you've kind of let sit by the wayside. And put all that shit out there really fucking quick. The reason behind something like that is simple. You're coming in late to the party. You need to have a strong offering the very first year. Your launch is going to make or break you. Get a couple third party exclusives. Get the regular ass third party games that are everywhere else littered in. Put that shit on there and come and swing it with your fucking crown jewels. That's the only thing that you can do and the best way to do it, to go and get people to be like, yeah, I gotta get that shit. Oh man, did you see it? It looks so amazing. Seeing Metroid and Zelda, and oh my God, just all of it, it's so fucking great. You want people to be excited, chomping at the bit, throwing their fucking money at you. And that will happen if you have a great launch lineup. Do not do some stupid shit and release, you know, prematurely be like, oh yeah, we're gonna release it and not have that many games to go and blow people's minds. People's expectations are insanely high now. You need to go and make sure that the Nintendo NX delivers. And a launch is the, well, th that's the first offering right there. That is always going to be a thing that people will remember you for is your launch lineup. And then going on for throughout the first year, you need to go and have game after game after game and just keep people coming back. So an, an incredibly amazing launch lineup is very important for Nintendo NX. Lastly, I'll end us with better marketing. Nintendo, your marketing has been abysmal at best. Most people still think the Wii U is nothing but a tablet for the Nintendo Wii. A lot of people don't even know about half the franchises that are existing on the Wii U, don't even know that's on store shelves, and it takes up such a minuscule amount of space in most game stores and in most major brick and mortar retail outlets. So that's bad. I don't see commercials for it. I don't see advertising. You need to go and step your shit up. Nintendo used to have tons of commercials all over the place. It was inescapable. You would see all this stuff all the time. You need to go and do that again. You need to make sure everybody knows what the fuck the Nintendo NX is. They need to know when that shit is coming out. You need to go and spam this as much as possible to the point that even if you're not interested in it, it's stuck in your head. Viral marketing helps so fucking much, but you need to be everywhere. You need to be on the internet. You need to be out in person. You need to be on radio. You need to be on billboards. You need to be injected into every single fucking commercial block, online, offline, on TV, anywhere possible. You need to go and do that. You need to advertise this shit on your own social media networks. You need to go and have it established on tons of different video game websites. Go and take up tons of space if you have to. You need to be inescapable. The Nintendo NX needs to be reminded everywhere and what games will be available. Again, you need to do this. Marketing is so damn important. Think about how many companies out there marketed their games insanely well, even if it wasn't that great of a game, but it sold like it was because it had good fucking marketing and people already know that they're getting quality from Nintendo. So there you go. It's fucking simple. You've got the money. That's not even the question of it. Get a good commercial out there. Get another one to follow it up. Get another one and another and another. And people might not like commercials. People might get annoyed with ads and all that shit. But this is one of the re reasons why the world continues to fucking turn is because of stuff like this. Because of this product placement. Because of these things being reminded to you over and over again. So you're like, oh, hey, like if you didn't hear about the shit, now you saw the commercial for it. Now you might go and check it out. Now you go onto Nintendo's YouTube and you check out the video for it. Oh, this looks pretty good. Then you go onto a different website and you pre-order and you see an ad for another Nintendo game or a recommended section. So you go and check that. Then you watch the gameplay of that. It just continues to go on. You're reading up previews for it and this just helps. This is basic shit that happens every single fucking day. Nintendo, be smart and market. 
I mean, you could go to all the biggest YouTubers that are out there and say, hey, we want to go and just throw you our games. Please play them. That'd be great. No charge. If you want to play them, hell, you can even fucking keep them and not play them. But we're just saying, if you want to play them and check it out, most definitely. We're just trying to get the name out there. That's all. And that's it. A big time company doing shit like that. Everybody be like, that's fucking awesome. I just got a free game. I'll go and play it. Then other people see that. Oh, I didn't even know about that game. Doesn't look bad. Oh, I saw a commercial for that. That shit was hilarious. Make the commercials memorable. Don't just make them like an advertising thing. Make them something that's funny. I've seen so many awesome commercials. The, the Crash Bandicoot commercials way back for PlayStation 1. Those things were f fucking hilarious. Nintendo, why don't you go and employ something like that? The, the Super, uh, Super Smash Brothers commercial for Nintendo 64, that was fucking amazing. Them just beating the ever loving shit out each other inside some little fucking field of flowers and you weren't expecting that it was awesome i love that kind of stuff but marketing just market the system seriously but this is my list of shit the nintendo nx needs to do and i'm sure there's tons more things out there that are very important or hell people out there could disagree with many of the things that i said i have no fucking clue but what would you do if you were Nintendo and you were trying to make the NX a success story, what kind of things do you want to see out of it? What do you want to see change compared to what they've done before? What things do you think this needs to have to compete with Sony and Microsoft in this console generation coming in at about three years late now? I mean, it's, it's going to be pretty fucking late. But again, Nintendo, NX, what would you do? Anyway, this is Alpha Omega Sin, as always, nerds, nerds, and gamers game. The fuck on!